All right, hopefully everybody had a chance to solve the advent of code, Santa's little puzzle that he has here. I'm going to show you now what I would do if I was reading this question, or if I was looking at this logical problem, which again, is something that in interviews, you get asked a lot. And in your day-to-day, -day, when you solve complex problems, they're usually these small chunks of logical questions that are asked and you want to solve. So I'm going to go through what I would do. Doesn't mean it's the only way, but what I would do to solve these problems. All right, by now you've all read the question and what we need to do. So after reading the question, I would get my puzzle input, which I have here. I'm going to copy all of this and Right here, I have my awesome node folder with nothing inside it. I'm just going to create a santa.txt file. And in this text file, I'll copy and paste the directions that, well, we have no idea what's going on. Let me close that. Now, reading the question, the first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I have a script file that I can run all right, now before I start coding anything, everything in my head needs to make sense and I like to keep things organized. So the very first thing I usually do is I comment and say that hmm, from reading the question, we know that there are two parts. There is question number one, question number two. So we're only gonna focus on the first one, which first one is what floor does Santa and up on. And the second question is, well, if we go here, the first character that causes him to enter the basement. So we want to say, when does Santa first enter the basement? All right, so now I have everything clear. And we also know that there's a few rules. The rules are that this character means that it, or not it, Santa, should go up one floor. And I also know that this character is the opposite and should go down one floor. And I know this is silly, but it's really important for you to write things out and understand what you're doing and what your goals are. We know that we wanna solve this question using these parameters that we get from our input, which is, well, gibberish for now. All right, so question number one. I always like starting it off with a nice function and we'll just say question one. And within question one, I'm going to do our read file. So let's go to the top here and do const fs equals require fs. All right, and we've done this before, so this should be fairly simple. It's fs read file. We're going to read the santa.txt file. And the santa.txt file will get an error or data. And within here, I'm going to ignore error for now. I'm sure it's going to work. So I'm just going to say const directions are going to be data dot to string. And that in itself means that the directions variable now has the directions that we want. So let me just run that to make sure that it's all okay. And you saw over here that nothing's printed because this function was never ran. So let's do that. We're gonna say question one, let's run it. All right, looks like we're printing out all this information, which is exactly what we want. Those are the directions. And this is another thing. I like doing things step by step, making sure that it all works before I write everything out and then oh, something's wrong, but I don't know what's wrong. I go one step at a time, 
logically talking it out in my head to make sure that it makes sense. As I'm writing this, everything flows like I'm speaking. We have the first question, we're reading file Santa, and from the Santa text, we're getting the directions. All right, so what do we wanna do next? Well, we saw in the output that these, well, it's just one big string, but ideally we can split them. So if we split them, we can analyze each one, one by one, like an array, we, maybe we can map over in an array. So a sneaky way of doing this is we can just say const directions array, and this directions array will get split up into arrays by doing split and splitting it just like that. And there's just a little bit of a shorthand little trick. So again, if I console.log directions array, There you go. I have everything in an array. That's a lot of items in the array, but everything is split out individually now. All right, next step. So I have each array. So we want to read each one of these because each one equates to either up one or down one. And well, we want to map over this. We want to go over each one of them, but we're accumulating something, right? We're saying one, then if we have two floors up, that's two. If we go one down, that's one. So we're adding and subtracting constantly. So in that case, we can actually do reduce. So with reduce, I can say const answer, in this case, will be directions array dot reduce. And this reduce takes the first function. So the first parameter is a function. And this function takes the accumulator and I'll just do ACC for now, just because it's shorter. And then the second one is the current value. Let me make this smaller so you can see. And this is a function that we're gonna do some stuff here, but the second parameter is what we wanna start off with in the accumulator. So we're gonna start off with zero. So Santa's on floor zero, on the ground floor. Within here, we can just say if current value, because reduce maps over each one of these items. And if the current value triple equals, and let's say this, which is up one floor, if that's the case, well, we can just return accumulator plus equals one, which is shorthand for doing accumulator plus one. So this adds one to the accumulator. So if the first item is this little bracket here, it's gonna be zero plus one. So Santa's gonna move up one level. And then we'll say else if current value equals the opposite bracket, then we do the exact opposite. And we're gonna return accumulator minus equals one. So it's gonna go down one. All right. So just out of curiosity, let's run this and see what happens. I'm going to clear and run this one time and we get nothing because, well, we haven't said anything. So let's just console log at the end of this, we have the answer. So let's just console.log answer. And we'll say that the answer, or we'll just say floor. So if I run this again, oh, I get a bit of an error. And that's because I forgot to come over here. Silly me. Let's run that again. Let me clear and I get floor 280. And that's the answer, that's where Santa ends up. He ends up on floor 280 if he keeps following the direction until the very end. Very cool. So again, just out of curiosity, let's add time to figure out how long this takes. And we'll say console 
dot time. Whoops. Whoa, my auto tab is not working well today. And we'll say Santa time. And this Santa time within this function, I'm told that we get the answer. We'll say Santa time end. If I run this, our function runs 437.437 milliseconds. So pretty fast because we're not doing anything too, too crazy. So curious what you got here. Keep in mind that this really depends on the type of the machine, uh, the type of machine you're on. But again, pretty fun to think about how to structure your code. So it's, first of all, it makes sense. It runs nicely. And also, you want to make sure that it's efficient. And looking at this, we're not doing anything too inefficient. All right, let's move on to question number two. And question number two, let's make space for this. Question number two ask, asks, when does Santa first enter the basement? So that is, well, using this loop over here, as Santa starts to get direction, when does accumulator go into the negative number? Now, I can simply copy and paste this into question number two and just maybe add an if statement here. Maybe I can say if accumulator equals or is less than zero, then, you know, we can say console log the answer and that works well. But again, thinking about the question, this reduce is going to map over everything. And you remember, this is a pretty big array that we're creating out of the directions. So if Santa on the first move goes into the basement, well, and then we still go through every item in the array, that's a bit of a wasted time, right? So we want to think about the problems in ways that make sense to us and are efficient. And that's something, again, that you want to practice is, does it make sense in your head? If you're supposed to do this manually, would you go step by step into through everything? Or would you just stop when Santa enters into the basement, into the negative number? So let's find a better way to do question number two. Again, with question number two, I'm going to say function question two. And within here, we'll say fs read file once again. And this read file will read santa.text. Again, this is the same as above. So I'm just going to do this quickly. And the very first part, which is the directions and getting them into an array, that's the same. So I'm just going to copy that again, getting the directions, making it into an array by splitting it. And now I'm going to add a little function that I think is better than reduce in this case. So I'm going to say the answer equals direction array dot sum. And sum, what it does is it's going to look through the array, go step by step. And if it finds something that matches, it's going to stop looping. So with directions.sum, I'm going to have the current value. And this current value, so that is the item or the bracket that we're getting. So this current value, again, we're going to do this if statement current value and current value, we're going to add one or subtract one. So again, I copy and paste it down here. But again, we don't really have ACC in this function. And because we're not really using a reduce, but we do want to keep track of a counter to see when Santa is going to enter the basement. So outside of the function, I'm going to say let accumulator, let me just be more descriptive this time, and we'll say zero. And this accumulator is going to get incremented based on the directions. All right. So using that, let's see what my console log answer will be. So we'll say again, 
basement entered at and we'll say answer and let me just remove question one for now and just run question two let's run this basement entered at true and we made a mistake here because what we want to do from some is we want to return something we want to return when a goal is met so at the end we're going to say return accumulator and when the accumulator is greater than zero remember return ends the function we're going to say stop whatever you're doing and then that's going to end the function but we want to know when does santa first enter the basement so that is at what number of directions does santa enter the basement so we also need a counter so this counter is going to be equal to zero and i've missed a bunch of semicolons here but that's fine and we're going to increase the counter every time it goes through an item and now the answer well not this but the answer is going to be the counter itself so if i do counter save all right and let's run this and oop, i actually made a mistake here because it's still zero because the counter is being incremented after the return statement so current value let's actually name this current item it's a lot more descriptive current item this is being returned before you even hits the counter so in our case unlike above we don't really need the return statement we want to save run and there you go and the answer in this case is 1797 awesome so again to test it out let's use our sun santa time you now to copy from above and we'll just put it at the top for time and at the end for time end let's see how fast that function runs we have again quite fast but if i did reduce which in our case that's what we use for the first question so let's just go through that we see that well the first round of santa time which is question one is let me just add a q1 in here so we can see and q2 i'm gonna add that to make sure the labels match let's do that again that's a lot better all right so um we see that question one definitely long, runs a little longer than question two because the first time around we have to loop through everything the second time around it's a lot less time just for fun again i always like testing our assumptions so if the first direction was to go downstairs let's see what happens all right so that's a little bit faster than before not by a lot because we're still kind of doing a bit of calculations but still a lot faster than going through this many items just in case you're wondering why in this case question two ended before or ended before question one and not so in the other cases again remember that read file is asynchronous whichever one returns first gets returned all right hope you have fun with the challenges if you've enjoyed this i recommend you keep going through the advent of code and hopefully as a group with our community when december rolls around we're all ready to follow advent of code for this year i'll see you in the next one bye bye